Live once again on location in Kumasi, Ghana at the University of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, right? And I'm here with my melanated brothers, my African brothers. Sir, can I get your name? Isaac Kukubwa. Okay, welcome Isaac. Sir, can I get your name? Emmanuel Bafile. Emmanuel. So I'm here with Isaac and Emmanuel, right? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yes. See, let me get that right. You checking me already on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be scared to um to pick my Americanism. Bafile. Bafile. Did I get that right? Yes, Bafile. Bafile. Check me on camera, baby. It's all good. Um, okay, so I'm here with some young scholars. So I want to start with you first, Isaac. Um, first, where are you from? What are you studying? And what brought you here to the university? Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm from Wasa East Adansi mm -hmm. in the western region of Ghana. And I'm here to study MPO vegetable crop production. And that's the purpose why I'm here actually. Yeah, so thank you. Okay. And you, sir? Um, I'm also from the upper west region of Ghana. And I came to Kenya way back 2017 to do my BSc in agricultural science. Completed and here I'm to start my master's in Enfield vegetable crop production. Sure. Vegetable crop production on the continent. So let's start with you, sir. Um, what got you interested to study and what led you here to vegetable crop production? Okay, way back in SH senior high, I was a science student and I never liked agri in any way, though my parents are farmers. Okay. Yeah, because you believed agri was as a punishment. See, way back in SHS, when you even offend um, uh, a rule or break a rule in school, they'll tell you to go and weed. Wow. Yeah, you see, so we felt it's a tedious, drudgery thing to be involved in agri But when I came to the university, when, uh, before I, I completed um, school, or before I came to the university, I had opportunity to work with people who were into this area. And I was like, wow, there's a lot of money in our Greek. And it's way, way beyond the farming thing I was um, looking at. So I chose all my programs in BSc Agriculture. I came to do our Greek and seriously, it's just marvelous. Love it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, I'm glad to hear that. He said, so it started out you felt as a punishment, has now become a passion. Woo, I love it. Sir, what got you into vegetable crop production and um, how would have you learned from studying it so far? Um, just like um, my party said, um, I Greek from the initial stage, I, I never like it because of the way we see a Greek. And though I'm from a farming community and both of my parents are all farmers, uh, I grew up in the farm. I go to the farm and way back in JHS, that is my junior high school level. Uh, I, I went into animal farming, I, I raised uh, poultry bears, and it became a source of money to me. But I never looked at the bigger picture behind it. So until I gained admission 2017 to study agri, then I realized there is something more than what I just thought about that. So after completing, then I thought of it that no, having known how important it is to have um, nutritious plants and those things. So I opted in to do vegetable crop production because of the high demand in vegetable crop production. And I believe the sector needs a lot of researchers who do vigorous researches into so many areas and come out with smart way of farming instead of the drudgery farming system we have with our old, our parents so that we can go back and impact the communities. Then we kind of combat uh, food security, hunger and poverty in my very country. Thank you. So it sounds like y'all doing this for Ghana as well as your family. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Okay, um so I see I see the I see my uncle walking up. So we we going to get to the right topic kind of which what you just touched on, the new age, 21st century farming. Um so I kind of I've been speaking with you for a good minute, so I want to check with my man Isaac. What is 21st century farming to you? And how, what benefit do you see from that? Okay, um, 21st century farming, I would just say it's a modernized way of 
farming that instead of going to the drudgery system you have easier ways to grow crops not necessarily needing a land you can even do vertical farming uh, grow backyard garden or even um, in containers or plastics in your own home you can even grow anything in your room once you have the right conditions to grow the crops you get it so so we don't actually need uh, a, a land as of old you get a land and plow which also involves a lot of costs you get it so they are modernizing the new ways of growing crops to feed our population okay okay and um Speaking of feeding the population, and you know, I, I asked a rhetorical question, and you was like, "No doubt." So, <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, how do you see this benefiting Ghana and um, taking that new method of twenty-first century farming, but as well as your ancestral traditional method, mixing those together? What is the benefit of mixing those, and what do you see for the future of Ghana with that? Okay, so. Um First of all, let me tackle what is this, uh, the, the benefits of it to Ghana. You see, as we all know, a lot of people are being born into the world, and popula as population increases, uh, spaces, let me say, lands become rare. So people, everybody wants to own a house. Everybody wants to have his place of stay. So all the lands are being used for building and a whole lot of other projects, forgetting that we eat every day. You get it? Yes, yes. So, since we have to eat every day, because we need to eat to live, we have to grow more to meet the incoming population, the, uh, the, the population stage of, of, of our current uh, 21st world that we are inside. So, I don't actually have to get a place where I walk nine miles to farm, as I used to do when I was younger. Wow. Yes, I used to walk nine miles to farm every day. I talk about that. Okay. okay, so yes, in my area where I come from, I have to pass three villages before we get to my farm. Okay. So we start, we set off 4 a.m., then get there almost 12, come back with foodstuffs carrying on ahead. Mm. Through back, we get home around 8, 8.30 in the evening. Then, so that was a normal routine for us. Yes, but now I can stay in my home, have a backyard garden, don't have to travel that long. You get it? Yes. yes. And we are still feeding the same amount of people, the same family that we have to go through all those stress to feed. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So it's more efficient with uh, the modernized farming than it used to be. Thank you. Thank you. Um, nine miles. Yeah. Wow. Yo. That's right. That's right. My man. <laughs> so same question to you. Um, what is 21st century farming to you? And... What is the benefit of 21st century farming? Um, to me, to, uh, in my perspective, I look at 21st century farming in a sustainable way. And my understanding about sustainability is when it meets the demand of the current and that of the future. So the 21st century farming is not all about just feeding the world today, but also think about the future generations that are to come. And I believe that in this, our 21st century, as my brother already said, most of our lands have been used for so many purposes, construction and a lot of things. But we have a smart way of farming. We can think about the soilless media of farming like the hydroponics and all those styles. That we don't need to just say, my, I don't have a farmland. The little space you have around you, even containers, bottles, you can even do farming there waste materials around can be transformed, then you can do farming to still feed the world. Um, with respect to food security, we realize that the world is growing bigger and bigger every day. Population is increasing. But the number, the amount of food available is becoming scarce and people are malnourished every day. And there comes the way, the case that people are thinking of what to eat every day. So it is our duty as agriculturists, as specialists in the field, to think beyond what the others are thinking. Not to just produce any food for the stomach, but foods that are quality, foods that provide nutrition enough. It's not all about filling the stomach, but what will provide the body with the necessary nutrient is what I look at. So I'm an advocate of um, organic farming in the sense that when we look at most of the animals that see eat from natural, they live stronger, 
healthier as compared to human. Mm. So eating what is natural, what is organic, without these synthetic traces in it, I believe will solve most of the problem of pharmaceutical things that is booming the world today. Eat well and you will not get to the drugstore. That is always the policy I think about. So 21st farming is not only looking at producing, but produce something that is quality, standard, that meet the body requirements. That is what I look at when we talk of 21st farming. My man just gave me a thesis. <laughs> straight up, straight up. Ooh, that beautiful answers, both of you. Thank you. Um, so right now we understand that this is the first week of school, right? Okay, so how does it feel for y'all brothers to be back on campus and in these labs and touching this soil? And I'm going to start with you. <laughs> okay, so it's very great to be around campus again. The fresh air in the departments, unlike the ones when you go home, smoke and a lot of stuff. You see, here it's very airy and vegetative, as you can see. So I really feel happy being here and... I always like to be on campus, yes, because I feel when I'm here, I, 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 can, I can benefit from something or someone will benefit from me. Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome, um, and thank you, because I'm benefiting. Well, let me not say I'm benefiting, I'm learning from all, as I said earlier. I've been learning so much since I've been here, so thank you. Um, sir, same question to you. How does it feel to be back on campus? Um, I feel so happy especially starting a new program altogether, Enfield Vegetable Crop Production. And this week has been a week that is so exciting. Seeing my own colleagues around, it's, it's so exciting. So the week has been so great. And though um, I'm not a fresher, like very confused, looking for a classroom to go and no say. So that makes the week so I mean, exciting to me. And meeting new people and meeting you as well has been a great thing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, I, you know, as we said earlier, we, we came in Monday. Was that Monday? Yes. The first day of classes. Um, I'd like to thank you both and, you know, thank the doctor. He over there busy as usual um, for having me and my uncle come in and speak and give some information. Um, but with that, I want to talk to you about you gave us a gift Monday. <laughs> okay. Hi, um, the Moringa Pies. Yes. Please, sir, um, can you tell us what are the Moringa Pies and... What did it mean to you to be able to bless the classmates um, with something you made in this 21st century? Yeah. Um, actually, um, many people will say we shouldn't say Moringa, but we say Moringa turn over. Okay. Give me right. <laughs> Give me right. <laughs> um, actually, the Moringa pie is prepared from, um, we use flour, the bread flour. Mm -hmm. Then you add um, margarine, you use um, garlic, onion. I'm a lover of vegetables, okay. and home too, we also use vegetables a lot. And you can see the link why vegetable crop production is my priority. You go eat well, and you live well. And Moringa pie is a fortified pie that stands out among all the other pastries products. Because Moringa itself contains its own nutrients. Now adding it to flour and turning into a pie is very nutritious, and I would say um, those who have not got the opportunity to eat it, in fact, they've missed a lot. <laughs> they've missed a lot. In fact. And it's a very good thing. And I think from that day, mo many of the class or most of the students will meet me and be like, wow, I never thought something like that could happen. Just the color alone was so enticing to some of them. Being, having a meat pie that's so green. It looked something, like yeah, like a shirt, very green. So it, it, it's so nice. And, I would say that we should go by that way, and it's so good. Okay. Powerful. Just this first week, how's this first week been for you? I, it's Wednesday, right? I know it's only been three days, but what are you looking forward to this school year? What, what is your goal for this year? Okay. Uh, Chiefly speaking, what I'm looking forward to this year, particular, particular year, is to be able to get abreast with what I'm coming to do and to be able to comprehend it very well, practice it for future benefits. Yes. And actually, this week we started, but we haven't had any class so far yet. Yes. But I'm happy to see people around 
see helter skater moving around classes mm -hmm. yeah it's, it makes me feel like yeah being a student is cooler yeah that <laughs> Being a student is far, far cooler. Yeah, because there are lots of advantages being a student. You are able to participate in anything. You can even join any other class. Mm -hmm. Just pay attention to learn more from that class instead of having your own class. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to finishing my first year with success and high scores and good grades. Thank you. Well, good luck to you. On, well, good luck to you on that, and I wish you well on that. Sir, um, same for you. So you haven't had no classes yet either. Uh -oh. I wouldn't say I don't have any class. I attended a lecture. Okay. Uh, lecture that was um, given to me on Monday by you yourself and your uncle, Uncle James. In fact, I'm so grateful. I learned so many things that day about hydroponics and so many things. I heard about uh, red worms used for hydro uh, aquaponic farming and those things. So which. I, I, it has given me another perspective of farming or agriculture as per se. That, in fact, there is more to do with agri, and it is something I will never regret entering a class called agricultural class. And that Monday, I was so blessed. It has given me different perspective that no, we need to go smart way of farming, and that will be the way to go forward, especially it's looking at a world that there is high food insecurity. Uh, many people harvest so many crops, but it's chunks they are harvesting because it doesn't pass through the right procedure. Production is not the right way. So the food is harvested, people are eating it, yet they are not nourished, malnourishment and so many things. But the systems that were shown, it's not that expensive. You can say make up, um, get your money and so I mean, get nutritious food for your body as well. And I would say that this week has been a blessing, and it's a great week as well. Thank you. Um, and my uncle's standing right there. So, <laughs> so, we, so we hear you. Um, but yeah, I want to I wanna second that. Even That was my first time hearing him lecture um, myself, and I was very inspired. Um, like I said, I've been inspired by you all since I've been here. Uh, just learning a lot, even the first night we got here, just talking to you, listening to you, let me say that. And you breaking down your science, breaking down uh, the information, just listening to you and my uncle go back and forth and chatting. And Eb joined in on us, and we had a good round table. Um, so like I want to say, I've learned a lot from everybody here, even just sitting in the class on Monday with y'all. I'll be honest, I was nervous talking. I didn't know I was speaking to the day before. So, <laughs> so I'm glad that um, what I had to share was well received. Um, and y'all, like I said, y'all welcomed me into the class and allowed me to just give off some of the information I have. Um, and I'm glad that we can do a full circle. Y'all can teach me right here um, and teach the people that's going to be watching this. So um, I want to say for us uh, out in America or the diaspora, whether it be the Caribbean, even the UK, um, some was in Australia, some was in China. Um, for y'all brothers here on the land, what would you like to share with us out there in the world? Anything about Ghana or just where you come from and your region, what would you like us to know? <laughs> okay, so I want to let everybody know that Ghana is a very great place to be, a very peaceful place and a place where anyone can make it as well. Yes. So, with relating to my program or my ideas for the future, we, 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 we pray and hope that as you are watching us here, continue praying for us, continue helping us here so that we can also stand on our feet and broadcast this good message that we are sharing so that the whole world can also hear this and agree could go forward, feed the world, live longer and live healthier. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you, sir. Um, I would say Ghana is a great place. And uh, it's not just to overemphasize things, but many foreigners come in and they'll be like, wow, this is a great place to be. And what I would like to tell my colleague Africans, black-skinned people outside there is that we should think Africa. We should think deep. We are great people, we, are great, we have great minds, we have bright minds, bright future, bright life. We should stand out wherever we find ourselves. And we shouldn't think that um, we are kind of um, a lesser gods to the whites. That is what I would say. In the sense that many times we think so low that what good can come from the African man. But I believe that Africans have great things in them. 
and we can do better. If we team up, come together as a team, we will go far. Together we stand, divided we fall. Divided we stand, together we fall. I'll say Ghana is a great place and let us team together as blacks and we'll move forward. Powerful, thank you. And I agree firsthand, um, and I'm glad that we was all sit here to do this. Um, got two continental Africans and one American African, and we here sharing ideas, building and learning from one another. So I think that's powerful, what you said is full circle. Before um, I close out, Isaac, any last words you got for me, you got for the people, or anything you want to share? Where can we find you at? And um, any words of prosperity? Okay. <laughs> See, life is so short, and uh, whatever you do, it's either two things you are carrying out. You're either going to benefit from it positively or negatively. So I, I would tell you personally, yes, that keep the good work and keep spreading the good news about what blacks can actually be. Yes, we are more than we can think of, as my brother said, and so let's keep hope alive. The only thing we need is to motivate ourselves. And you've started a good work. So keep motivating us to everyone and anyone you come across. And to the people who are also watching us. Uncle James, yeah, shout out. Yeah. Uh, God bless you very much for everything you are doing for us. And we pray that God will push you forward to a greater height. To do more for us and to achieve more with whatever you've started with. God bless you all. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I, I guess I'll speak for you. Um, we appreciate that. So, so thank you. Lastly, my man, same to you. Any last words of encouragement? Any, where can we find you at? Um, yes. Um, okay. Um, I don't have much to say, but what I would say is that I'm grateful having you and having Uncle James around. Having my colleague, Ebenezer, who is behind the camera and... <laughs> Also having our boss here, Abain, <laughs> I'm grateful. What I would say is that um, life, as my brother said, we do things that when we leave, we have a legacy behind. So let's push forward and make sure that what we do will not let the world regret tomorrow, but they will be grateful for the good works that have been done. So let's leave that good legacy so that when we are no more, it will still, the name will still live on. People are dead, but their names are still living. Others are not dead, they are but their names are also dead. So let's do that, and one day we surely say goodbye. Thank you. Powerful, powerful. Um, so thank you both. I appreciate you both for sitting down here with me. Lastly, this is my uncle. This is my uncle James. Right yes, <laughs> and I don't, I don't want to point out. Um, this is my great uncle. This is my grandmother's brother. So we're doing this for generations, yeah. and I'm, I'm thankful that he was able to let me know that he was coming through, and he invited me to come with him and tag along. Like I said, I didn't know what to expect. I am blessed to be sitting in the presence of all of you. I am blessed to be able to come in to even speak to y'all and, and, and offer something from my experience. But overall, I say I'm blessed to just be sitting here talking with you all individually and as a group and to be learning firsthand, not assumptions, not anything extra, real people on the land, real people doing the work. And I say I love you both. I love you all. And thank you. Thank you. You appreciate it. So my last question I always got to ask, <laughs> when you hear the words sane African, what does that mean to you? Power. Hmm. <laughs> Power. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Power. Same to you, sir. When you hear the word sane African, what does that mean to you? Um, actually, the first day I heard the word sane African, I was like, sane, why? Is it talking about cognitive saneness? Or what is it? <laughs> you want me to explain? <laughs> yeah, I just talk about it. Why? Sane. Why the word sane? <laughs> Okay, I can do that. I'm glad you asked me. Yes, we are talking about the cognitive mind because um, as you know, I deal with the realm of psychology, which is why when I went up there, I was talking about social work 
Um, but then as well tying it to urban farming and 21st century farming, because in my experience in America, it is uh, a European Anglo-Saxon ran society, you know, due to the British and due to the situation of slavery that has been set up for us in the West, we are living in an insane society, which is alien to us. So some of the things that we may be doing that we think are right and beneficial, it's hurting us. Um, and not to dwell on that, but just say, as we was talking about earlier with the pandemic, um, some of the things we thought were doing to help us and everything really wasn't. And many of us perished. So at the end of the day, saying African is reclaiming our African mind, reclaiming our African culture, reclaiming our African identity, um, and making sure we represent that on a global scale. And we are representing that here. So when you hear saying African, yes, we are reclaiming our mind and our identity and eventually reclaiming our globe or the land. How that sound? It sounds great. Okay. Great. So that I think I really summarize this well. Power. 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 The power it entails a lot. Yes. So power over mind, power over everything we've talked about. So I believe you carry power to cause change wherever you find yourself. And maybe be successful. <laughs> that's right. So we're talking power. So that's what we're gonna do. But I see I see my uncle right behind me. Anything you wanna add in before we close this out, sir? Uh let's see. <clears throat> Dishonored to be here and listen at some of these comments. This is seventy two hours after my lecture and yours on Monday. So we got some new vigilantes who happen to be scientists. And they're counting their revenues in the future in cubic inches opposed to square footage. Mm. Okay? So let's do this. Powerful. So, yeah, I'm here with my grandmother's brother, my brother's from the land, and we're going to close out like that. This has been a St. African production, Peace and Power from Kumasi, Ghana. And we're going to keep doing what we do. Fools, so hold up, hold up. The doctor's in the building. The doctor's in the building. The doctor's in the building, baby. Um, come on, come on. Sir, the man with the master plan, any last words for us here and your powerful students? Well, the spicy thing is that for the past 50 years, the population of the world is urbanizing. And this trend is going to continue and be much stronger in the next 50 years. With urbanizing of global population means population, I mean, Urban slum food security is becoming a huge issue. Of course, from the pandemic, any innovative way you can use to grow food, you better take it serious. You never know what is going to happen tomorrow. There we are. <laughs> the future is here. So I ain't even going to close it out. <laughs> Sir, I'm going to give you the honors. Please take us home. Well, the beauty of it is 21st century agriculture is a very innovative, intelligent, uh, artificial intelligence centered and sustainable, sustainability minded way of growing food. And it stands under this maxim or this mantra, one health for all. The soil must be healthy, the plant must be healthy, then we can eat good food and be healthy as well. If the soil is not healthy, the plant cannot be healthy. Our food cannot be healthy. We cannot be healthy either. So it's a one health for all. We need a healthy environment, live in a healthy environment, grow food in whatever medium, grow healthy food, eat healthy, and we can expect to have a healthy life. Thank you. Peace.